Rub up your engines! People often ask me about Hyundai Genesis. Are they good? Now they're their own brand, Genesis. In 2015, they decided to branch it off to its own brand. Now they're just called Genesis, just like Toyota makes Lexus as well. Toyota never sold a Toyota Lexus. They always had Toyota and Lexus separated, but in this case, the Genesis evolved from Hyundai and has just called its own brand now Genesis. And they tout them as world cars. They're designed in Germany, South Korea, and the United States, and so far, they're all built in South Korea. As you can see on this 2012, here we go, manufactured in Korea. Now we look under the hood, it's a true luxury car. Got a big old GDI engine. We'll take this crap off so we can look at it. Now this V6 engine puts out 333 horsepower, so you really don't need a V8. And this particular one's hooked up to their new eight-speed automatic transmission. It works good enough, but it's not up to snuff with higher end ones like Mercedes and Lexus that do have a much smoother shifting capability than these. But then again, originally this was the $34,000 car. You're gonna be paying a lot more for those brands. And this is a classic roadster. This particular one is rear wheel drive. It drives in the back. Of course they have all wheel drive versions and stuff, but hey, you want kind of a sporty car? Most guys want a rear wheel drive for the handling experience. After all, most race cars are rear wheel drive. They're not front wheel drive. You get a very good handling experience in one of these things for the money that you're paying. And my customer bought this one used for about half what a new one costs, so he really didn't invest all that much money. And as we look inside, the leather seat's wearing out, needs to be restained. You can easily restain them. Gotta warm up. Here we go. 105,000 miles on it. The armrest, well, that looks like it. It's Death Valley. The leather wasn't made that well on this part. That needs to be redone. But the rest is held up pretty good. Sunroof, a lot of room in the back seat with a nice armrest. Starts up and runs smooth. Put in gear. Smooth car, there's no doubt in that. But I can feel a little bit of a shake. Which is why the customer brought me it. He wanted to know why I was a little bit shaking. So, I'm gonna hook up my big old scan tool. We'll plug it in. There we go. Now it's working. You see the lights on? Now we're gonna check out all the live data. I'm looking for particular things that might be off. And here's some data that's off. Desired intake camshaft should be 0.02. You can see it's moving all over the place for bank one. And we check bank two, it's moving around a little. It's still not staying right. It's moving around less than that. But it shows, I know from experience, that both the number one camshaft and the number two, they've got some problems with that variable valve timing because they should stay at an idle and they're moving up and down. As you can see here, those are the intake camshafts. So let's look at the exhaust bank camshafts. And again, they're supposed to be there and you can see the bank number one's moving around quite a bit. Well, the bank number two is moving a little, but not quite as much. So two exhaust camshaft is the least worn, it's worn a little. The bank one exhaust camshaft and the bank one and bank two intake camshafts, those systems are worn. And I see this all the time in these vehicles as they age, they're worn. So he's getting a little jiggle at idle. He wanted to know what it was and I explained. Now, if he would have bought a Lexus, odds are wouldn't be doing this. They're better made, the camshafts don't wear like that, and the variable valve timing assemblies don't wear so they don't get that vacillation and they idle better. He admitted to me he was looking for a Lexus, but he said he couldn't find one in his price range that didn't have 200,000 miles or more, and in that price range, when he drove it, he said, I gotta have it, this thing rides great. And it still runs quite well, but 40,000 miles later, you can see the cam stuff is starting to wear. Like I say, you generally don't see that in a Lexus. So the idle's a little bit off, but it still goes down the road pretty good. We'll take it for a spin. We'll take a corner, it's got a nice smooth cornering, and we'll step on the gas and see what happens. It does take off, there's no arguing that. This is a fast car. And one certainly can't complain about the ride. It's a smooth ride, just like my wife's Lexus. You hit bumps, you don't feel much. It's got a nice smooth ride, even though this thing's got over 100,000 miles on it. This is certainly a car you can jump in and drive cross country. It's a very comfortable car. No fault codes. 
So it's in pretty good shape. Now in 2020, J.D. Power said the Genesis was the most dependable car in North America. Well, I wouldn't go that far over time. And realize, if you've seen in my other videos, I wouldn't put much faith in anything that J.D. Power says. After all, it's, come on, it's a PR firm. They get paid money to say things. <laughs> they are good cars. There's no arguing that. But certainly not the best made one. If they were, those cams wouldn't be worn like they are. They haven't had problem in the engine. I've seen Lexuses that had 350,000 miles and they were still stable. Unlike this thing that's starting to get some instability and that stuff's wearing over time it'll really be felt. And realize with any GDI system as they age an intense pressure starts to wear things out they are uber uber expensive to repair when they do break down. But interestingly enough in it's 2012 it's still got power steering fluid in a pump. It hadn't gone electronic yet. The newer ones, of course, are electronic. Now, it certainly has a smooth running, smooth riding car, except for that little glitch at idle because the variable valve timing cam stuff's wearing out a little bit, but it still rides smooth. Has a lot of power. Goes great on the highway. The suspension's still in excellent shape. It's certainly gone a long way in evolution from the early little rattle bucket washing machine cars that Hyundai made. There's no argument, they certainly have come up. But I wouldn't call it the best manufactured car for North America. So if you're looking for a good used one, well, like I said, this guy paid less than half, had like 60,000 miles on it, he's got a hundred something thousand on it now, he's getting his money's worth and he's gonna continue driving it as long as it still goes good enough. But these are not good vehicles to buy used with really high mileage or the early ones that are now getting to be pretty old because repairs on these things are sky high and they do wear out faster than the Lexuses. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Angus 22 says, Scotty, I'm curious about a gasoline car and a hybrid. Which should be better than a quarter mile race? You're, you're talking uh, apples to oranges. Now, gasoline engines for their weight and power are the fastest. Hybrid cars have gasoline and hybrid engines, but the hybrid engine, an electric motor, and a big old heavy battery, it's going to weigh more, so a pure gasoline engine with the same horsepower would blow it off the road, because it would weigh less. You know, there's all kinds of different things that you'd add to here and there. I mean, a pure electric car would be the fastest if it had the horsepower at the wheels, because it's instant torque, and it would go off the absolute fastest if you had a battery that had enough power to pull it through. But with that, a gasoline engine, the reason we use gasoline engines is because their size and weight, they have tremendous tremendous power, and that's why we've been driving around all this time. Joseph72993 says, Scotty, I put my car up on ramps to fix my exhaust leak. When I was finished, I went to start the car, it started and died. I pushed it off and it started and ran fine. What could it be? You drive it on ramps, you got the vehicle angled like this. You're probably low on fuel, and when you had it that steep of an angle, it couldn't suck any fuel, so it started and died. If you're low on fuel, just fill it up. Now, if you're not low on fuel, it would still probably have something to do with the fuel pump being at a different angle, and that could be that maybe your fuel filter screen inside the tank is a little bit dirty. Angle made it have to suck harder, and then it wouldn't suck hard enough. Odds are you're just low on fuel because you're at that angle. You can't drive it on four ramps at once. It's just two, so now, like I said, if you're not, you might need to take the tank apart, look inside, maybe there's crud inside, maybe the screen filter, it's called the sock filter, it's clogged up and needs replacing, but I bet you it's just low on fuel. Mackenzie W says, Scotty, I got an 04 Chevy Impala automatic 3.4, 200,000 miles. I've recently getting the PO300 random misfire codes. I've done spark plug wires, new battery, and I see fuel filter. What could be wrong? Well, it's a 16-year-old Impala with 200,000 miles. I'm amazed that the thing is still running. From my experience with those things, unless your head gasket's starting to blow, and it could very well be that. It's common on those too. You might check that. Either the fuel injectors are kind of clogged up. You can get them pressure cleaned by a mechanic. Or commonly, the fuel pump itself is just weak. If the fuel pump does not pump enough fuel, then the engine won't run correctly and it can misfire. It can pump not enough fuel. It will make it run somewhat lean and then it'll make the car misfire. And with 200,000 miles, rarely do I see an Impella that the original fuel pump is still working perfectly. So you might just pressure test that first. Very easy test. And if it's weak, put another fuel pump on it and pray it's not the head gasket blowing. For that, you watch my video, how to tell if your car's head gasket's blown. And then you can do that little test with a $30 Amazon block leak test. And if it is, I'd say get rid of the thing. Don't have the engine rebuild on an old thing like that. Julia says, Scotty, I changed my water pump, my 2010 Scion XB, with the GMB water pump. Yeah, those are good pumps. So far, no leaks, but I see a little coolant spray in my hood when I emerge on the highway and go up to 4,500 RPMs. But I'm not losing any coolant. Who knows what's spraying then? Uh, nothing should leak in a Scion. So what you want to do is 
have a pressure tester put on it. Have it pressure test to see if something's like, could be as simple as there's a loose clamp. But if you see spray comes out of the water pump when you pressure test it, eh, you got a bad water pump because it should not leak at all. Not a brand new one. And not on a Toyota especially, but maybe a clamp's loose or something. You never know. Hopefully you put a new gasket and clean the old area because if you didn't, then there's going to be little holes and it's going to leak some. And if that's the case, rather than take it all apart, you could add something like bars, aluminum seal, radiator sealer, and that, if you have little dirt marks where the gasket doesn't seal right, that will seal those gaskets perfectly fine if there's little gaps here and there. You could use a sealer. I had people do that when they forgot to scrape all the old stuff off and there's tiny little gaps. The sealer will fix that permanently. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.